Good evening. My name is Carl Scatty, and welcome to Vintage Key Studio. Today we will be looking at the harpsichord. This particular model was made by a gentleman known as John Reynolds Catch, and it's dated 1942. And if I just remove this part of it, you'll be able to see his name on there. John Reynolds Catch seems to be a harpsichord maker of some renown. There's been a few of his instruments for sale over the years that I've seen. Quite what he was doing making harpsichords in the middle of World War II makes you wonder what was going on. Although it actually looks like he's recycled some old furniture for this. I bought this a few years ago from a lady and uh, she was very sad to see it go, especially for the price I paid for it. Let me just show you the insides. A harpsichord is a completely different keyboard instrument to a piano or an organ. There's no actual sustain on any of the notes at all, unless you hold them down, but then they die away. So there's no sustain pedals or anything like that. There are three pedals on this, but I'll get to them in a minute. There's a certain way of playing this that's completely different to playing any other sorts of keyboards. Um, this one, it was sort of handmade by this guy. I've fixed it up a little bit over the years. There's been a few problems with these parts inside here, and I'll just show you what we've got. So basically we've got two choirs of strings. I think that that's the term, choirs. So you've got the softer sound. If I just take this off here, you'll be able to see. So at the moment, if we just look here, when I push the, the right hand pedal down, this moves those, these are called jacks, these little wooden things. They're, I think this here is made of some sort of hardened leather, and then you've got a, a felt damper there. So the idea is that when you press a key down, it pushes that up, it plucks the string then when it's let go the, the, the felt touches the string and, and stops it ringing and you get that kind of that nice sort of end of a note on a harpsichord because the little plectrum the leather thing there has to pass over the string but if we just look here as it does it just take that jack out of there. As it does it, you can see that that, that, it, that moves. So it goes up over the string like that. And then when it comes back down over the string, it's shaped in such a way that it will kind of just push out ever so slightly to allow it to move past the string and back down again. It's a very clever mechanism, incredibly fiddly. I, ha I have managed to procure a, I think it's a peacock feather. Uh, I'll just put this back. Uh, because you've, you've got these plectra, as they're known as, the plural. And then you've got these ones here, which is a sort of completely different sound. So that's like this sort of like leathery material. And these ones here are made of, well these ones are actually made of, some of them are made of plastic Tupperware box, I think it was I used. And this one is actually made of bird feather. Um, and I think this is from a peacock. And I say thank you to the peacock for giving But it possibly might be pelican, but it was on the floor near where there was a peacock and this, this stately home I was at recently. I've got no idea if this is the right way to do harpsichord quills, plectra, or whatever they're called. Uh, but in these times, you have to make it up as you go along. So you basically cut a bit off like that. Well, that's what I do anyway. And it's probably a bit too wide now. And it's, a, it's sort of quite, quite tough material it's made of like um it's made of keratin like a rhino's horn or a fingernail 
But I must say, just to add that the bird that came off is still alive. Okay. So you, you, you get it to a, a, a sort of a decent size. And then the idea is that I, I won't mess one of these up now, but if I just show you, uh, you have to kind of poke out the old one that's sort of wedged in there. And then you go through from the back with the new piece and then you, you push it through and then you trim it all off. But as I say, these are all set, so that I'm not going to mess around with them now. But that's that's basically the idea. You, you kind of just have to trim them and all just do them all individually. As far as I know, I don't think you can just go and buy a, a set of harpsichord plectra or plectrums. You have to make them. One thing I should say is if you're ever moving a harpsichord and um, you have to sort of t turn it up on its side or turn it upside down, do ensure that this part of it is in because otherwise all of these just fall out i say that because i was at university years ago and uh, i saw some people moving a harpsichord and they'd forgotten to put it in and everything just fell out we did laugh we've talked about the two choirs or two sets of strings the other thing i should mention is that if i engage the the softer uh, choir of strings if i just play some notes like that now, with the middle pedal down here, that engages the buff stop. And the buff is this, these little pieces of some sort of felt stuff. I don't know if you can see that moving there when I press the middle pedal down. So if I play a chord and then I move the buff stop in, it's, the idea is to simulate the sound of a lute. So it's rather nice. You heard me at the beginning of this playing a piece by Domenico Scarlatti. Uh, it was his sonata in B minor K27. I often thought that he wrote this just to be annoying. If it was me, I'd have carried on going. If you lift all the pedals off this, or, it, or in theory take the stops out, there's no real engagement with the strings at all. So you need to have either one of the stops in. The softer leather plectra sound like that. The, the tougher one made of the quill. And then you can actually combine the two, which gives it an even brighter, warmer sound. Tuning on the harpsichord is similar to how you do it on the piano. On this harpsichord, there's two strings per note. And the strings are actually, they're wound from this peg, for instance, goes all the way up there, and then around an end peg, and then comes all the way back down again. But they're two different notes. So that string there is tuned to, to in this instance, E flat, and this one next to it is tuned to E. So they're not in pairs of, of notes, they're kind of like split up. So to tune it, it's basically the same idea as a piano. You have to get a special size tuning peg. This is a, a smaller one, because if I show you a piano size one, that's a piano size tuning peg, or tuning tool, wrench. 
and then you've got the, the harpsichord size one which is a completely different size but it'll probably be okay for a tiny car to change the tires and then the basic idea is that you just uh, you find which note it is if I press down this B here and you can hear that so if there's one note by itself there for the the leather string leather pluck string and the peacock feather pluck string and then both together and then if I just detune one of them you can just hear that's how you tune it up It's in tune. That's the tune it up song. You have to do a tune it up song after every time you tune something. Now, do follow me over here and I'm going to show you a couple of slides. Here is a picture of Domenico Scarlatti, born in 1685. He made several wonderful LPs and you heard me earlier on playing one of his songs, Sonata in B minor, Allegro, K27. He wasn't the only person who wrote for the harpsichord, but in my view he was the best. Certainly had the best hair. So here's a diagram of the mechanical parts of the harpsichord. You can see the tuning pins where the string is wrapped round and then it comes off of there and goes up um, past the nut where the buffs are. In this harpsichord here we've only got one buff and then the string goes via the jack. The jack moves up and down dependent on the key um, and just falls back down with gravity. There's no springs or anything. The jack moves up, the plectrum plucks the note and then when it falls back down the damper dampens the string. The harpsichord is synonymous with Baroque music. The term Baroque can be interspersed with grotesque because it wasn't actually called Baroque at the time. It was the people in the Enlightenment or the classical period afterwards who called it Baroque and in fact they tried to forget about it. They tried to forget Bach and they tried to forget all that stuff. In fact strangely enough they tried to forget Vivaldi and then Bach kind of brought him back and then everyone forgot Bach and Vivaldi and then Mendelssohn a few years later or several hundred years later brought Bach and Vivaldi back and now I'm bringing them all back with some Baroque and roll and who could ever forget this classic hit from 1956 by Domenico Scarlatti and the Comets Baroque Around the Clock one, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, Baroque. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, Baroque. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, Baroque. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. It was the start of modern music as we know it. Well, thank you very much indeed for watching. I've been Carl Scatty at Vintage Keys Studio demonstrating the hot chord. I wish you all the very best and hope to see you again next week. So please hit that like and subscribe button. Good night.